explore the forefront of blockchain at the Phil Dev Summit, held in Brussels on July 9 through 11. This summit is a must attend for anyone engaged in the Filecoin ecosystem, featuring key tracks on the future of Filecoin, decentralized AI, and security. Network and hack with top developers and forward thinkers who are building the future of data storage. Continue your journey at IPFS camp from July 11 to 13. This unique gathering empowers attendees to experiment, learn, and collaborate on projects that push the boundaries of decentralized web technology. With tracks on libp2p, climate resilience, and decentralized applications, IPFS camp is perfect for those ready to innovate and build a better web. Don't miss out on these pivotal events. Visit phildev.io and ipfs.camp to book your tickets today. Join us to shape the future of the internet. Welcome back to DWeb Decoded, a podcast from the Filecoin Foundation that explores the intersection of blockchain and the data economy. Today, I talked to Megan Clemen, founding officer of the Filecoin Foundation. We talk about how her background as a biotech founder inspired her interest in blockchain-based data services, the nuances of building open source communities, and why she's excited about Filecoin in the second half of 2024. Megan, it's so great to have you on the show. Oh, Aaron, I'm so happy to be here today. Amazing, amazing. So Megan, it's great to finally talk to you here. I've wanted to do this for a while, but haven't had a chance to make it work. But you've just done a ton of heavy lifting behind the scenes at the foundation over the years. Uh, I've really contributed a lot, not just to the foundation, but also the Filecoin ecosystem. And uh, really just wanted to like really just hear your story and and like what you've, you know, how things are going and how you got into this kind of crazy business in the first place. Uh, but we'd love for you to just maybe introduce yourself really quick and then we'll we'll dive in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I have to say it's an absolute pleasure to get to work in an ecosystem with so many brilliant people working on some of the hardest problems I think actually exist in Web3, the decentralized web and crypto these days. Um, so, you know, my name is Megan Clement. Um, I actually got into crypto through the uh, very straightforward path of running a biotech company. Uh Something that um, <laughs> doesn't doesn't come up as often in uh, in these stories, but um, I, gosh, probably 15 years ago now, started a uh, a company that used high throughput robotics to change the way that we look at histology and pathology data. So it was basically like a fancy pants robot that took big sections of tissue, cut it into small slides stack those together, made the data much more similar to radiology. Um, so having something in 3D and something that you could use computer-aided diagnostics in. So we had a lot of like uh, high-precision robotics and uh, a lot of machine learning. Uh, and one of the things that I didn't imagine was going to be such a huge problem when I started this company was data management. You know, like I thought like you sign up with AWS, you put your stuff in the cloud and like that this is a solved problem. And shockingly, all these very cutting edge things that we did, um, like using, you know, vision recognition, AI, you know, diagnosing cancer more easily using robotics uh, were small problems compared to just looking and managing, you know, at the, at the time it was like terabyte sized data files um, of scientific information managing those well. Um, you know, our company, we would make 100 petabytes, um, you know, um, every six months or so. And so our AWS bill was crazy. Um, there really wasn't the tooling infrastructure to be able to look at these data sets in the way that it was needed. And it really opened my eyes to how much of scientific innovation is halted by these things that I thought of as solved problems, this kind of fundamental infrastructure, you know, essentially like, like the roads and the sewer systems of, you know, of the internet, um, that those things really aren't set up and that science is slowed because of it. A lot of these, you know, a lot of these, like, where's my jetpack, like sci-fi innovations of the future that we thought were right around the corner. A lot of the reasons that they're slowed is because of data management, self-driving cars, that is all computer vision. That is all machine learning. Um, it requires large amounts of data to do that accurately. And we just don't have the infrastructure. And that's what got me into Filecoin. Um, finding a way that you can make that infrastructure in a way that's permissionless and actually becomes this thread that you can pull on to get us back into um, kind of like the ideals of the web one world. Uh, a world where this infrastructure is not owned by a couple large companies with walled gardens. You know, it's not owned by Facebook. It's not owned by Amazon. Um, but the data is actually owned by the people. The infrastructure is owned by the people. It's open source. And you're able to build on top of it. 
That's um, super interesting because you've really directly lived through a lot of the problems that Filecoin is is now trying to solve. And you lived through a lot of this stuff like 15 years ago, back before, you know, AI, machine learning, all these things even became buzzwords. Like you were kind of dealing with these problems before anybody else really even knew what this was, right? So that's super interesting. And coming at it from like the scientific angle as well, I mean, that, that's one of the, the the areas I found super interesting about that I've, 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 I've learned as, as a part of being a part of the Filecoin ecosystem is just how like science has been like trying to solve these problems for like decades, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the kind of the rep- like the reproducibility crisis and trying mm-hmm. to keep data fair and open and being able to be like, you know, reproduced yeah. and you can't really have scientific yeah. advancement if you can't have people being able to reproduce studies and, 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 you know, kind of freely exchange data for this types of stuff. So Absolutely. yeah, it, it's really kind of mind boggling because you just sort of assume that like, Oh, yeah. like we're in the yeah. 21st century, all this stuff must just like work. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like I have all of the world's knowledge in a like little like iPhone device that I can keep in my pocket. You know, I'm able to pull up any song ever, you know, on Spotify and I get annoyed if it buffers and takes more than, you know, like a couple seconds to load. Uh, and yet these really crucially important things around scientific innovation are not solved problems. Um, I think it's pretty, you know, and I think it would really blow a lot of people's minds how much of our scientific process is from a hundred years ago. And if you think about the way the rest of our lives, you know, were a hundred years ago in like the 1920s, um, the rest of our life is different. We should really be changing science to have more access to the raw data, not just to articles where you describe what you did so somebody can replicate your experiment. Uh, and Filecoin is really an opportunity to do that, um, a place where you can put these large open data sets uh, and have people build on top of them because all the fundamental infrastructure is entirely open source. That's super interesting. Um and kind of continuing on, the, on this, like, how did you end up going from, you know, developing this biotech company to working at, you know, start helping to start the Filecoin Foundation? Like, what was that pathway? How did, how did you end up sort of getting into this world? Yeah. Um, so I have always, you know, really cared about open data um, back Probably 20 years ago, I ran um, an open data project in Jalalabad, Afghanistan, um, where we created, um, well, we, we had a few different projects, but we, you know, put wireless mesh nets around the city. Uh, we also had, um, you know, what we called the Beer for Data program. So we had a, a hard drive that we would keep on the bar, um, uh, which, you know, Afghanistan's a Muslim country, a dry country, uh, and so it's like our little illegal speakeasy, but it could be a gathering place for people from different, you know, uh, NGOs, different um, government agencies uh, could all come there because it was outside of the militarized zone. Uh, And we had um, an offer where anybody who's willing to share their data, so whether that's a researcher, an anthropologist, you know, like tracking all the, you know, the tribal structure in Afghanistan, or that's an independent, you know, military contractor who has data that's open, anyone who is willing to bring their data to bar, open source their data, um, could drink for free. And we found that, you know, just that providence of like having open data, having a place where, you know, people were able to freely share their data created these really incredible synergistic results. Like we really had, um, you know, we had projects that started to pop up coming out of the bar that wouldn't have existed otherwise. Um, And they were like instilled in me the, you know, the deep, deep need for having open data in the world. Um, and Maybe so, we can use a similar incentive program for people to get data on the Filecoin network, right? Like uh, booze for pibs, you know? Yeah, booze for pibs. <laughs> I feel like uh, maybe like a corgi-shaped stein, you know, like beer stein. <laughs> we're, we're moments away from it. It's a great um, idea. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of like the, the you know, fundamental spirit um, is kind of the, the same in, um, uh, in my previous work versus the Filecoin Foundation. Um, but it, there are elements that's like starting an organization, you know, has some of the same structure, no matter what the organization is. It's like you, you have to, you have to file some paperwork to get a, you know, to become uh, registered somewhere. You need to get a group of people together and you need to sell them on the idea that this thing is real and can be real if they're just willing to build it. Um, 
So how, how, how would you contrast the difference between like starting your own company versus starting like a protocol that's governing like or a foundation that's governing an open source protocol where the, the protocol already sort of existed by the oh, time Filecoin Filecoin foundation was launched. Right. It, but the goal is not necessarily to like build the thing, but it's more to like incentivize other people to come in and help build the thing. And, and you're kind of providing like air cover essentially for other people to come in and build. Like how would you ca- kind of compare and contrast those, those roles? Totally. Totally. Um, I think that's a really great question uh, because they are like similar in some ways, but really, really different in other ways. Right. Like I think that, that building a company from scratch, you know, you have the pressure where it's all on you to convince the people that this thing that is inside of your head can be real. And, you know, they need to like have that same vision so that they can pick up their pieces and build towards something. And that's like a really magical thing, but it's a heavy lift. It's really hard to get a group of people to all see the same vision that you have, you know? Um, I think for Filecoin Foundation coming into this open source ecosystem where there are, you know, Filecoin as a protocol uh, was very close, like mainland was very close to launching. People had been working on IPFS for many years. Um, there, there was already the idea of what Filecoin could be, but it was much less about creating that idea and much more about uh, figuring out how to take all the many people who are working towards that idea and bring them together. Uh, I think it's one of the things that is like both very beautiful and very, very difficult about uh, open source ecosystems and decentralized ecosystems. It's because like in a private company, you have the carrot and the stick of like being their employer and paying people, you know? (laughs) Um, Whereas with Filecoin, you need to think about permissionless incentive systems. So you need to think about how all of the many players in this like diverse ecosystem are working together. And I feel like, uh, so the role of the foundation is is really fundamentally really different than the role of a private company. Like the role of the foundation is to be listening to all the different things that are happening in the ecosystem and not stifling their growth, but being able to coordinate people and push them in the same direction without any of those uh, carrot and sticks of those people being your employees. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a totally different kind of uh, value proposition, right? You're not or you're not necessarily trying to convince people of the dream. Like these are already people who are bought into the dream, but they've got. But you need all these people kind of acting in some degree of coordination to like realize the dream. But totally. it, it, but it's not like a centralized company, right? It's it's a, it's a, it's an ecosystem of company of of individuals and companies who are all kind of working toward the same goal. But people have differing visions of like what that end goal actually is. Uh, in a decentralized environment where there's not, you know, kind of the the top down, like this is what we're doing, uh, approach being taken. A hundred percent. And a lot of it is wanting to give people just the tooling so they can build their dreams on top of it. I mean, I think that's like a really fundamental difference between working on an open source protocol versus working on a private company, uh, is that you really want people to have the freedom to take the thing that, you know, to take Filecoin, build on top of it, like you you see that they're going to have their own use cases and they're going to know better than you what those use cases are. So it's really about empowering them. Um, But there are these central infrastructure things that need to be built in order to do that. So it's like balancing the coordination with the letting people be free to do the things that, that they have the best idea of what needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And maybe talk a bit more about like, just kind of what your role, what your day to day is at the foundation. I know you're you're obviously kind of a public figure on behalf of the foundation, but there's a ton of stuff that you do kind of behind the scenes as well. Uh, I would love for folks just to get an idea, better idea of of you know kind of what role does Megan Clemen uh, play in this world? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think. Um uh, I could probably say something like pithy, like my day is like spent, you know, many more days are spent mostly on Zoom. But um, a lot of where my mental effort, mental attention goes is uh, balancing the needs of the foundation as its own organization with the needs of the wider ecosystem. So talking to people, you know, outside uh, in the community and figuring out, you know, where are there really where is the Filecoin ecosystem thriving and where are there gaps? And then working to figure out, okay, well, what's the best way to close that gap? Sometimes the best way to close that gap, you know, is for the foundation to come in and start doing that work. Sometimes the best way to 
close that gap is to create incentive systems, you know, like either grants or, um, you know, or like community um, incentive systems to get other people in the community to come in and fill that gap. Um, so I think that's that's where a lot of my time goes is um, is trying to look for where those gaps are, both externally in the ecosystem and internally within the foundation. Got it. Got, got it. it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a lot. lot. That's a lot to handle, right? Because there's so many things happening. There's so many uh, kind of different like work streams happening at any given time. There's so many different teams, uh, yeah. especially now when there's a bit of restructuring going on in the ecosystem. It must be pretty challenging to kind of keep up with with and 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 I, I find that sometimes like it's sometimes people just need kind of like a therapist also <laughs> like, like they just need someone like vent to or like feel like they're being heard and it's like okay now that you're done venting let's figure out a solution here you know yeah uh, i feel like that's like you know uh it's it's a staple of any open source ecosystem right is <laughs> yeah <laughs> right? Think, you know honestly i think it's a like a staple of any ecosystem where people really care and i think yeah that, um you know for I was going to say for better or for worse, but it's truly just for better that people in the Filecoin ecosystem really, really care about building this technology and and getting it done, which means that there's a lot of high emotions around it. Um, and, you know, it, it is a lot to try to pay attention to, but only because of having so many really smart people who are building so quickly and have so many strong, passionate ideas you know, that, like, even even if in the moment it feels like somebody's yelling at you, like it's nice to take a step back and be like, yeah, we've created, we're working on something that people care enough about that they, that they want to yell about it. It seems like there's a bit of like kind of musical chairs going on in the ecosystem right now. Uh, so I was hoping you could maybe tell us about like, if, just from your vantage point, like what is the the role that the foundation is playing right now? And, and maybe on just kind of a macro scale and also on like maybe some micro things where the foundation is really st- stepping up to take the lead. Yeah. I mean, I do think that, you know, it's uh, an interesting time period as Protocol Labs has shifted from being a engineering organization and a research organization to more of a investment, you know, fund. Um, it's still there's still the engine driving uh, the Filecoin ecosystem coming out of Protocol Labs because they're still able to incentivize people, but it's a really bold move. Uh, to you know, put your values where your company is, and say no. Really, we've always wanted to have an ecosystem that is made of many small businesses. We are not helping this by being a single company that you know is growing and growing in order to to build this technology. What we want to do is support an ecosystem that is full of small businesses that are very targeted um, around what they're doing within Filecoin. Um, and, and that's only speaking to the Filecoin part of Protocol Labs, not even all the rest of the stuff they do. Um, and, you know, I, and I do think that it's an exciting time for the foundation because it really does sort of shift the role that we are playing. In the first few years of the foundation, uh, we were really focused on engaging with the community, both through events uh, and also, you know, we held these very like core missions around um you know, uh, facilitating the open source governance for Filecoin improvement proposals, uh, as well as, you know, um, being part of some other large community programs like the Filecoin Plus program that's intended to incentivize people to bring real data on the network. Um, Those were sort of like the big areas of focus. Now that Protocol Labs is not existing as kind of the, this like central guiding force, uh, I think there's a lot more of a space for the foundation to come into that role. Uh, and I think that from the foundation's perspective, what we should be doing is bringing together the voices that are in the ecosystem and being the place where people can can coordinate uh, and be rowing in the same direction without being told to do so by one central agency. Like we're not the people dictating it, but we are the people coordinating it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Right. And it's, and it, it, it it's, it's taken, you know, th- well, I guess what, like three and a half years to sort of mature to that point where, okay, like we're, we're kind of, you know, we're kind of getting promoted, I guess, going, you know, JV to varsity or, or however you want to describe it. But like, yeah, t- taking on the role of like, okay, how do we just make sure that things are kind of moving in the right direction? We're not like rowing, you know, against each other on, in, yeah. in opposite directions, right? Because that's obviously pr- counterproductive. Uh, but then getting folks to 
uh, giving folks the tools they need to, to row, but also making sure that people are kind of rowing in the same direction. I think that's, that's a good way of putting it. Exactly. Uh, and then, um, just, you know, we've got a couple of minutes left here. So I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on, uh, just kind of bigger picture, like, what what excites you about Filecoin right now? I, I think when I think about Filecoin, just just personally, what what I find really exciting about it right now is just that we we really seem to be sitting at the the confluence of kind of all these like buzzwords that we were talking about earlier, right? Whether it's like deep end and AI and computing and kind of all these things that like were just sort of abstract things before, and then now they're all kind of unfolding in front of our eyes in in the real world. And and, and it's like wow, like none of this stuff can really exist if if something like Filecoin isn't. Uh, it doesn't exist as well to, to really be the foundation for all this innovation. So I would really love to get your thoughts on like, just why are you excited about Filecoin like right now? Yeah, I mean, I think that we made a big bet a number of years ago uh, that data, that we're moving into a data economy and that uh, whoever owns the data is going to, you know, be, is going to have a lot of power. And we wanted that power to go to people, right? We want that power to not be held by us, uh, but also not be held by Amazon, also not be held by Google, uh, but to be fundamentally open source and distributed. Uh, that's the only way to have something be safe. That's the only thing, you know, both from cyber attacks uh, and from things like censorship and government interventions. The more that the equipment is held by people and is on software that they're able to look at and view and understand how it works and contribute to, um, the more the power that comes with data, you know, is owned by everyone. And I think that, you know, I think that five years ago, people were like, yeah, 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 you know, data is important, you know, like, but I think that it's really gotten into people's heads now that we're seeing the rapid development of AI models and seeing that the thing that you know, controls the speed of how quickly these models develop is their ability to access data. And I think it's, that's really like hammered in this thing that I believe that people in the Filecoin ecosystem have believed for a long time. But I think it's become much more visible to the outside world how apparently true it is that holding data is holding power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people had that kind of that light bulb moment once some of these these AI tools became kind of you know just available to consumers yeah. like your ChatGPTs. You're, you're like, whoa! Yeah. Like I've heard about this stuff before. Sentence. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I've heard about this stuff in like science fiction before, but now I'm actually using it. Yeah. And like, where is this data coming from? Like, who owns this? Like, wh- like right. who are they? Are they using my data? Like, I, I have no idea, right? Yeah. So I think I think I feel like it. Like the the the, the value proposition of of what we're doing seems to have is much easier to understand now, I guess. Right. I think, you know, as in the last 18 months than maybe it was before, where it was kind of like this, oh, like data, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like well, anyway, especially even like seven or eight years ago, is that right? Like, you know, I, maybe 20, 2017, you know, you talk to people about crypto and the idea that this is a data storage protocol would like blow people's minds, right? That that's what like Filecoin, you know, that's what Protocol Apps was building with building the Filecoin protocol. Um, then that just wasn't where the attention was in crypto. And I think that, you know, the emergence of AI and how fundamentally, how clear it is, how useful AI is, like makes it very clear to people um, how important this area is. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Uh, well, that's about all the time we have for right now. But Megan, uh, any quick final thoughts and how can folks find you if they want to get in touch? Uh you can definitely, you know, this is very old school. You can definitely email me at Megan <laughs> love it. Org. Love it. Uh, but you can uh, also send, send a send you know send a, a letter. Yeah, you know, send a physical a post, letter. Right? I take physical <laughs> letters every day of the week. Um, a carrier pigeon. I always respond to any correspondence I get over carrier pigeon. Uh, you, can, you can catch me on uh, on Twitter because I'm I refuse to call it X. Um, uh, Tink MK, and you can you can get me on the uh, Filecoin Slack. Uh, you can also find I mean, me on the Telegram also Tink MK. Amazing, amazing. Well, thanks so much, Megan, for your time. And thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back soon with another awesome episode. Thank you so much, Aaron. This is totally delightful. I'm really happy to be here.